by the way, I know way too much about you guys. That <laughs> we're just like, ah, <laughs> you nosy. I got assaulted by Handy. Sexually? Aye. Uh, nice. Was it as erotic as I think it was, or was it just a load of old f***ing Patricia's, was it? That's exactly what you think when you're getting your d*** groped in the bistro, like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I was like, hold on, I test the water, so... <laughs> and then I was like, I don't even need a sh to be honest with you. <laughs> just falling like, yeah. <laughs> just, just, just... <laughs> Back again! Another episode. What episode is it? Ah, oh, fuck those. Uh, <laughs> six. Is it six, eh? Hey? I've done 19 podcasts this week, so I don't even I don't even have this many thoughts. Oh, the boys are fucking flat out in the <laughs> podcasting. Bank recording. I said I made a mistake the other day. I said, oh, it's good to at least we'll get these done, then we're off. And now I was just like, I'm not off. <laughs> 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 fucking so depressed, I'm not off. Bro. Got that fucking, got that editor spine. You do we hauled in, eh? Got that question. Oh, I'd love we hauled oh, in. Oh, well, well no we should have. <laughs> we we should have been away to Austin, but you know. Ah, <laughs> sure, don't get it. Eh? <laughs> Well, I'll get into it. 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 Oh, I was, I'm the only one going and I don't even want to go over here. I'm like three weeks solo travel. You don't want to go? No, I didn't want to go, but now I'm going. I'm like, here, fuck uh, it. Oh, well. I'll have a jolly good time to myself. Uh, one of the two man stag do, sir. Uh, help me get crack. Uh, help me get crack. It's two boys. You know what I mean? Pr old, prank old ball and chains at home. You pranking know? each other. How sad <laughs> would, a, would a stag do be when you do all the stag do things with just one other fella? Uh, you know, you're like, here, lad, sit in that chair. <laughs> And then a wee midget comes in like a stripper. <laughs> Ain't enough for you. <laughs> Try, <laughs> trying to create the atmosphere of seven lads with myself. Good, your tits are fun. Yeah, go on, you man, bastard. Shaving his eyebrows off when yeah. he's sleeping. It's just you and him. <laughs> Put, fucking him. Putting brownies in his boxers, making him get shit himself. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Put a dildo in his fucking uh, in his suitcase at the airport. He's gonna put that up his arsehole. Take him shooting during the day. Do you know what I mean? I I. Uh, do you ever, you know when you do stand-up and someone hits you with like a shitty heckle and you'd be like, man, that's so hack, like you can't, when, yeah. when's a comedian coming on? You're yeah. like, fuck. Shut up! Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how many like people working at the airport find a dildo and they're like, fuck, uh, guys, no. do something better. Another right? dildo in the case. Oh, he's got the big old fucking easy jet. He's got the big easy jet ticket, fucking some crack. Third he's, time this week. These boys are some, oh, jeez, there's cocks hanging out of them all over the place. Uh, oh, yeah, hand parties are nightmares. Just fucking leaving little trails of dildo straws everywhere they go. I know. Like, you couldn't get real cock if you wanted? No. Nah. Like, I thought, fuck, nah, no. And there's always one, too, that, like, you know, is, like, a summer camp later role. And they're always, like, the mouthfest. Yeah. I hear a lot of reports from Hindus, and most of them are, you know, lads will go away on stag days and have a great time, and women come back, and they're just like, well, we don't speak to Julie anymore. You know, like, there's yeah. a lot of that going on. I got assaulted by Hindi. Sexually? Aye. Nice. When I worked on, a, they were playing, like, some, you know, it's weird to have, like, I used to wait her in, like, a bistro. Mm -hmm. You know, and there was a hand do going there before they and you're went out all, in the town. And you're all thumbs too, aren't you? Working in there. Oh, why? Not uh, strong enough. <laughs> <laughs> and they were they were playing like some sort of card dare game. And uh, the, one of the girls turned to me and was like, "Here, I just got this card. Like, you know, to get a kiss to the waiter." And I was like, "It definitely doesn't set in the card." Uh, and I was like, "Cause there's no way that any company is making a card game for a hand do." Yeah. And one of the things is get a smooch of the waiter. And then one of them grabbed my dick, and I was wearing like school trousers. Did you she know? get a grip on it? Did oh, she? she did, I. But then I, you know, backed away. Was it as erotic as I think it was, or was it just a load of old fucking Patricia's? Was That's it? exactly what you think when you're getting your dick groped in a bistro, like you know. <laughs> 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 Which would be grand if you weren't working. Aye. You know, if you just went for a fucking uh, struggling off, Aye. And got Aye. half pulled off through your pants. And then, like, I was trying to be like, you know, I don't want to ruin their party, you know. So I was just like, ah, oh, here, stop that, carry on now. <laughs> and I was like, don't be serving these fucking gaggleless sluts anymore. They're I mean, uh, someone grabbed my dick in Lavery's once. Right? Like just, during a photo or something? No, or like, just out, like after, like drinking just upstairs in the smoking area. And so there's the ones just chatting, blah, 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 and the girl did the, the no look cock grab. Mm -hmm. Which I was just like, if this, if this was the. You know, you hate playing that game. But I was like, if, if I was just like, all right, fuck, we're, we're having a good time, go to take a sip and look away. And she'd be like, yeah. you know, you'd be like in prison. <laughs> yeah. She's just like, mm, and I was like, the fuck? It was so like, not well-timed even. 
It's just menacing to grab just, someone's what's cock. What's like, what are you doing? Over the try? Were you wearing jeans, eh? Uh, yeah, I think so. So she probably didn't even get a dick, like, a grip of the dick. It's probably just like... No, it was more, it was more, yeah, it was more like she was fingering me. Aye. Well, not really, but it was just like... Did you get that old denim pouch in you? Now, this was a hundred years ago. Aye. You know what I mean? When I had a piece on me. <laughs> now, it's a... It's all disheveled and sad. <laughs> <laughs> what color boxers you wearing today? You chopped me up, bro. Aye. Niall's, Niall's got the, the white on him. Couldn't get over it. I have navy on. Because I'm, oh, going, to, got, cause I'm got, going to dinner. I've got <laughs> <laughs> I got the tie-dyed ones on. Oh, I fun. Very right, fun. That's how old they are. When we went to Austin, I bought like fucking like 12 pairs of tie-dyed boxers out next. Which is, I mean, there's, some of them are cool. The purple ones are all cool. And then the, the red ones look like I've just bled kind of all over them. Yeah. And, then, and then washed them. Yeah. So that's what I'm wearing today. But. Well, you got to be careful too. You're like, well, like I'm very milky. Like, like <laughs> I've bought things before. And been like, those are cool as fuck. And then I forgot that the person wearing them on the website was a black dude. Oh, the, your skin color is milky? Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. you meant you just had a general secretion. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, depends on the day. But like, I like bought a, a pair of like, r- like Ralph Lauren, like yellow shorts. Yeah. And like, it was this, you know, dark black guy wearing them on the website. And I got them and I literally have never felt more self-conscious in my life. Look at myself in the bedroom mirror, bunk bed in the background, my fucking pink gut hanging over these uh, yeah, bright yellow Ralph. I couldn't wear them. Bright yellow is dangerous, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of stuff black people can get away with, white people can't. Oh, everything? Every, everything, yeah. Like you see, a, you know, some older black dude in like an orange suit or something. Yeah. You know, and you're like, you can't do that when you're fucking white. Yeah. If I had worn orange suit, you'd think being on bargains was having some sort of like a fun day or something. <laughs> you're just getting the 12th, feeling a bit <laughs> fun about yourself. Yeah. Uh, was I gonna say? Yeah, I bought I bought Ralph. Is it Lorraine? Lauren? What is it? The Lauren or Lorraine? It's one of them things where it's like the wankers say Lorraine. Yeah, and it's actually just just say Lauren. Aye, uh, Ralph Lauren boxers. I bought a pair of them, and they were two XL, and they were like, you know, like European two XL or something. Yeah, and that just sh- stuffing my my genitals into it, like not in a you know impressive way, just like these are. I was like, are these women's pants? Yeah. Dick on all side roads and had to fold it a wee bit, put it in. Oh, why? You know what I mean? It was like a, they're a pair of sheath boxers. It was a fucking, yeah, it was a fucking disaster. We should get a pair of sheath boxers and just uh, wear them on the podcast. I'd be willing to experiment with them for sure. Just have the full, you know. It's one of those things that'll fuck up boxers for you. Like you'll be like, "Where's the dick pouch in this?" Yeah, I don't like. Did you ever see when fellas wear those loose, sort of, like what we're wearing? What we would call boxers is like boxer briefs. You know, real boxers are those like. Bed sheet material, kind of boxy. I got a few of them too. You got a few of them? I got a few of them knocking about. What are they doing though? I, I, it's fun to wear them. Like I used to wear them in the flat in London and uh, guaranteed kill the room every time. You know, I'd walk in, get a, get a bowl of cereal. Mark's there playing fucking Sudoku. Tim's there fucking. Praising the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I just walk in and they had briefs. Like a full out Bra- Briefs or like, like the you, boxy what, boxers? What you were describing there, like the bed, sheety kind of tail, they go down to your ankles. Uh, like, you know, they're fucking massive. Yeah. But they're fraying, like, you yeah. know? That's, shimmy that's about the, in them. But that's the problem. Like, I feel like if you pull the pair of jeans up with them, it would just be like you had a pillowcase down Oh, your it kind. does. It is, it's yeah. It's like there's a lot of material going yeah. on. You can't be wearing them in the heat, like. Nah. Oh, no. Not, it's a fucking nightmare. Not the loose testis. Nah. Flying all over the place like fucking hubba bubba. <laughs> On a sunny day. No way. There's no way to cure that fucking, the hot bag. But you're about to say no way to cure chafing. <laughs> There's a man up the road as the cure for chafing. <laughs> cure for chafing? You go to his house. <laughs> oh, you... I'd be away. I'd be like a shot down the road. <laughs> you get some old boy just rubbing coconut oil up your fucking, up your big milky calf. Free me from this Parisian Damien. This Parisian Damien? <laughs> Soundcloud, here we come. Parisian Damien. <laughs> Oh fuck! There was a girl shout out to her. Um, the bomb squad is making waves, man. Shut up, bitch! You know what I mean? We're fucking, we're 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 global, Mister Worldwide's. Aye, aye. Where's she at? Lima Valley, Korea. Oh fuck! Aye, she wrote to me about this about the siren, was it? Aye, she goes. Uh, <laughs> just leaving the demil, I think the DMZ's demilitarized zone, isn't it? In Korea, uh, there and and stick up. And stick on yours and McCann's new podcast. And I thought North Korea sent a missile out for fuck's sake. Near <laughs> shit myself. Thanks to your theme tune. <laughs> imagine, what a way being, to go. imagine being like, I don't know what the fuck she's doing over there. But imagine, you know, that's a trip of a lifetime. Yeah. In, in this current climate, you know, you would be you'd be drinking in the, the scenes and, you know, be, be able to go back and tell your grandkids like, 
I was in Korea eating a feed of dog and fucking, you know, <laughs> dodging missiles left, right and centre and all. And she's just walking along listening to us talking about her fucking dicks and boxers. I know, if there was a missile strike and that was the last thing you are listening to. Oh, God. Bomb squad! That's like one of my biggest fears. Like, you know, like you're in a car sometimes, you put on like a silly song, like a bit of cheese pop or something. Like, what if you fucking die that minute and then that's the last thing that was blaring your phone was like the Cheeky Girls or something like oh, that? Oh, so sad. So sad. I always think about that, like, you know, trying not to be on the phone too much in the car just in case you're playing like... Like the same thing, you know, like there's just a message for you. Being like, there's a boss at quarter to ten. I don't know how to get the <laughs> quarter to ten on a day. We had the quarter to eleven. I hear, oh, sir, I had a feed of a noodle yesterday. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Do you want brown sauce or spaghetti? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's nothing sadder than you eating a, eating a fucking... Uh, again, it's on the line. It's it's like smoking in bed. Are, yeah. you, are you kinging it? Yeah. Or is it like fucking loser behavior for me and you just be wolfing sausage paps in a car? Oh, why? Listen to Larry June. Parked up. <laughs> <laughs> and loving him. Yeah, just like... <laughs> man, he's so smooth. Man, <laughs> smooth, man. That production is... Out of... Oh, I spilled red sauce down the crotch again. My car... See see the amount of podcasts we've done the last one? Like up and down to Belfast. Look, my car is an actual skip, like. Yeah. An actual fucking skip. Yeah. Like, I've seen way worse, though. You know your ba- You know your car... Well, I try, and, I try and keep up with the cleaning. Yeah. You know your, you know what's getting out of hand when you, you can get everything you need in your car so if you get in the car and you go oh shit i don't have a fork they eat this don't worry bro got a <laughs> fork here you know what i mean you got some hot sauce you're like oh man i forgot the bad drink don't worry pack of waters down the back here still half a coke from yesterday's <laughs> mcdonald's what else you got oh man i should have got red sauce so- say no more yeah let me open this metal console do you want a vape gravy or peppercorn do you want a vape <laughs> <laughs> yeah full sauce <laughs> diane sauce i've got it on the ban marie in the fucking metal <laughs> console here what do you need? What a shed pen my right that is. I could fold my foot. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got a Pam Marie in the middle. <laughs> Yo, bro, we hooked you up. You want a rotisserie chicken? Yo, dog, we heard you like christening buffets. <laughs> <laughs> I got a tray of honey budleys up in this bitch. <laughs> Whole boot lined with wake sandwiches. <laughs> Yo, we start up here. We got the egg and, egg and onion. We move down. <laughs> we got the roast beef, mustard. What else you need, player? What else you need? We got a stack of napkins. <laughs> I got a napkin dispenser. <laughs> and then up in the back here, hit the button, gravy boat. <laughs> da, 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 da. Put an air fryer in the steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking for a lot of goose on. Open, open, right? yeah, open the fucking glove compartment. What do you want? Hash brown? <laughs> do you know what's a, t- a funny habit in our house now? We have a very sensitive smoke alarm in the hallway. Uh-huh. So if, one of them ones is always ringing, like random parts of the it, day. It doesn't go like, Dit, but like if you farted, it would go off. Like if you make toast, it's like, ding, ding. And it's become a joke now, even with Eddie, where it goes like, dit, 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 and he goes like, mommy's cooking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Domestic abuse. Fucking slam dunk. Slam dunk. The boys are in Korea. Unbelievable. <laughs> we should go to a podcast in Korea, should we? Absolutely. Mm. <laughs> Live podcast in Korea. Yeah. That'll be the 10th episode right there. 10th episode? Wait for a bigger milestone than that, surely. <laughs> no, I'll get out there to fuck. Hit it while it's hot. <laughs> get it while it's hot, player. Tell me about you snotting up a seat. Took a 2-7 free the other day, and, um, you know, I'm trying not to... I'm a sneezer where I, like, hold it. Mm. You can feel your eyes fucking bulge out. Mm. And everyone tells me it's terrible for you. There's a list of reasons not to do that. I'm the same. So I'm trying to train myself to not do that. Yeah. But the reason why I do that, I rediscovered, was because every time I fucking just let it rip, just full fucking like flubber comes out of my nose. Oh, that's gross. And I was in the 273 and I was like, you know, had my headphones on, was listening to a bit of music, was getting very into it, looking out the window, you know, and then went for a sneeze and was like, fuck it, I'm going to let this one fly. And just fucking snot shotgun the seat in front of me. And thankfully there was only like four people on the bus. But then I was like, I can't leave this here. Like I can't in fucking goodwill leave this lying. Like, so I reached into my rucksack and I was like, what am I going to clean this with? And I just pulled out a pair of Nax boxers and just fucking well, the boxers wiped clean? it up. Oh, the boxers were pristine, so you know? So you're going to put the boxers on some other day? Oh, I have to. just going to be a big fucking snot pile in it? Uh, your, oh. mo- your mother will be like, what are you even doing with yourself? And you're like, don't worry, <laughs> it's only snot. Yeah, you're reading them sick cutties again. <laughs> <laughs> He's got that snot fetish. Back, I, watch, oh, I, I watch that podcast, you dirty bastard. Don't drag that back up, hands. fucking turn me. Getting all these dirty clutches, sneezing your cock in. 
<laughs> wonder what that feels like then. Getting sneezed on your cock? Yeah. Oh, it's if someone's <laughs> mid cock and they just like. <clears throat> if I sneeze in your cock, it would recoil in your belly. That's gross. I have a big yes. fucking pfft on my leg. It just fell up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking rotten. <clears throat> I told you I was I, I was telling uh, Aaron in the car now about how there was a, there was a <laughs> there was a tub of soup in my fridge right i was in the it was from the wee, the wee farm shop locally right and there was it's been there for about nine days but the date it was still on date yeah. and then it was out of date on the 20th I, i'm not a big believer in that you know what i mean I, I don't think like the clock strikes 12 and you go oh i have to bend this now I can't yeah this shit. said the 20th on it this is like 21st i was like all right I'll, I'll give it a go it has been in the the fridge for you know a week plus and uh i had it and went to straban last night shout out to the boiler room um, and I got there, and you know, you know, a lot of comedians, it is almost custom to shite immediately as soon as you get to the venue. Yes. But I was like, I will shite, I will shite, and I went in, and uh, absolutely decimated the place. And he, he, here's the thing, it, actually, it wasn't bad. I just needed a good healthy shit. You know what I mean? I'd done a workout before I went, had a big dinner, uh, get that shit out of me. And the thing was, I opened the door and there's a f- young fella like dying to get in the toilet after me. And it was like, you know, one of the, you know a proper cubicle where it's like a divi- like a, the door seals off. It's not a cubicle. It's like a door shuts into another wee space. And I opened the door and this comes like at the door, like, excuse me, lad, like he's busting. So I think he went in and shed his brains out. And then everyone was like, some, you know, Ronan Boyle's like, he's like, some fucking dirty gun fucking shade the place out and all. And then <laughs> here's the thing. I'm, we're standing, we're in this little holding cell. It's like a green room. And there's like a, Everyone's like, fucking smells like shit. He stank the whole fucking place out and all. And, and they're like, yes, you are stinking. And I was like, listen, I did shit, yes, but there was nothing overly remarkable about it. But the, the young lad looked like he literally shoved past me to get in the toilet. I think he fucking, I think it was him. Every time. I think he'd done the damage. Then I'm st- everyone's complaining about the shite and they're running around with Febreze and everything. And I, <laughs> I sort of got... Making a real show and dance of it. I really... <laughs> Damn it, who the fuck was that? <laughs> but then we're in this wee storeroom, right? And I, it's it's lined with shelves. And this is the sort of Kip Strabana's. This is the stock room for the booze. Trash drinks. More Southern comfort than you need in all of Northern Ireland. Yeah. Fucking uh, Cactus Jacks. Jägermeister Cold Brew. Yeah, a couple of wear, red squares. Blue aftershock, like trash. Fat frogs. Ugh. And I, <laughs> I, I go up on the fucking shelf with my wee notebook. This, you know, it's like just shelves and there's like a wee space for me to write. So I set it up like that. And there's like a, you know, the vent that you'd see out the back of like a tum- tumble dryer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I stand in front of it for a second and cold air hits me in the face that smells like a sewer. And I was like, fuck, no wonder it smells like shit in here. Is this sucking the fucking air out of the toilet into everyone's face and everyone's going, get us, you dirty cunt, no. <laughs> but then that was that was a bit of crack and all, but I was like, it's, there's definitely something happening. Like they're pumping the air out of the fucking toilet into this little room and it smells like just your, your face in an asshole. <laughs> but then, you know, I was waiting that long to go on. I was like, man, I think I should, I was like, I shouldn't have that soup. Man, I was getting like scrumps and everything. I was like, oh my God, this is fucking, oh, Jesus Christ. I was like, do I need to shit again? Do I need to shit again? And I was doing that thing where it was like, you know, you know, there's just a, there's a, there's an acute feeling in your asshole, and you're like, it could be farts, it could be shit, I don't know, what, but I, but I need it needs to be in a controlled environment before I do this. <laughs> the room already smells like shit, but um, so go back in the toilet, and I mean, I think the soup kicked in, right? <laughs> because before I even fucking took my shorts off, take a shit, my art, it was like <laughs> I forgot you were wearing shorts. I don't know why that's funny. I, know, I was. <laughs> It's like that fella that just had the colonoscopy. I was just standing, I was like, hold on, they test the water. So, <laughs> and then I was like, I don't even need a shit, to be honest with you. <laughs> just full of gas. It's just just absolute. And I mean, that was probably about half of the, what came out of me. But then tell Niall what the soup in question was, like flavor wise roasted parsnip and carrot. And oh. curry, was it not? Curry, yeah. <laughs> Roasted parsley nice. and curry. Fucking curry soup. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, I wonder why my bowels are so active today. I can't believe that. Give me the shit soup. Curry soup. But it was about fucking fortnight old, that's why. <laughs> it's so funny, by the way, to be like, I'm going to be a bit half conscious here and get myself a soup and go for a curry soup. <laughs> but there's parsley about it. <laughs> no, this is not a healthy soup. This is a decadent soup. Like, uh, you know, if I'm pretty sure there's like coconut milk in it and stuff. It's like very, uh, yeah. Mainly all the things that would, you know, make you shite your pants, yeah. to be honest Trigger with you. the scat. 
I hate too when you're when you're a half day gent, you know, and they're just smelling shade from the toilet. People just assume it's you, like, you know. Well, I did. You know what I'm like? I was like, get out of my way. Yeah, I'm going for a yeah, shite. You announced you were shiting. Yeah, so everyone thought that was the crack. <laughs> but like, I, 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 would, I do the same in the house. But I would never. To my mom. But I would never <laughs> wake her up out of bed. Get up, you! I'm going for a shit. But I, like, I, I would put my I would put my hand up and go like, sorry, boy, that's a fucking disaster. Yeah. But like. It wasn't that remarkable, mm-hmm. you know. The, the you know the complaints everyone was having. I don't think it was me. No, well, it's really bad. You don't tell anybody about it. I have a theory. You leave the building. I have a theory. What's that? The young lad that was bur- bursting to get in the toilet behind me, who I dare say shit the shit a brick, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think. Now I'm just going detective on this. Came outside the building after the gig, got a few photos with a few people, got a few photos of these, the, these lads, young lads, like, and then they were walking with us up the street. And he goes, oh, well, he's fucking good night and all. And then he goes, I'm and he puts his hand, he's wearing shorts too. Like he's wearing like sports gear. He puts his hands in his pocket. You know, doing that, hands in your pockets, run. He, as he's running away, he goes, I'm away to get a wee bag. Right? So he's away to get a fucking bag of Coke. And then I put two and two together. I was like, I think he's been on the fucking, the powder all night. And it's given the Coke shits. Ah, the Coke shits, and yeah. And he shit, he shit the bed out in the toilet. I think that's what's happened. Yeah. So don't come pointing your finger at me. Skinny fat cunts always do the smelliest shits too. Oh yeah, you'll get like an unhealthy skinny guy yeah. you know um you, like when woodsy used to live on near botanic and the guy didn't cook a meal for three years yeah he would just be like oh sure but maggie made for breakfast budgie for lunch you know lee garden for dinner budgie again yeah you, you know uh, that skinny guy that sort of shit would be disastrous i did a gig at the ulster sports club on thursday i took a shade the fourth and like there was two there was three cubicles and there was two fellas or sorry two cubicles and there was one fell in the cubicle beside me and like I was doing a shit where I was like embarrassed of it and like wanted to get out of there, wash my hands, get out. And as soon as I went out, uh, he was also there washing his hands. And I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. And then I just kind of was washing my hands. And he turned around and goes, good shit, la! And I was like, ah, oh, fucking hell. This is this is where you need the lavatory's green room toilet. like. Yeah, but this what I actually said that young lad who was bursting past me. I was like, fucking best luck in there. Uh, I'll, be, <laughs> yeah. I'll be fucking breathing through my mouth. Uh, God love him if he was in there to do coke, like. Yeah, because oh. all you have to do is sniff, you know, and he and he's doing it on top of the bog, inches from where I just created this fucking biohazard. Well, that happened me, remember one You'd time. See, there would still be the heat coming off it, you know. He'd be like, <laughs> and just poke it all back up. Do you remember that at a friend of ours' wedding? Yeah, and uh, I went for a shout, and uh, someone went in immediately after to do cocaine. This guy's like, you know, in his forties, whatever, and like I take a shout, go out to wash my hands, can hear him going in, like kind of. Like, you know, rustling his shirt and all, getting the bag out. And then he just goes, Jesus Christ, what <laughs> dirty hair was in here? <laughs> I mean, at some point at a wedding, you're going to need to absolutely, you know, pinch one off. Like, it's all day. It's all day and I coffees and you're starving and a big meal and pints and all. You're like, I'm shaking. Don't be getting lined out at a wedding either, for fuck's sake. Doing Rock the Boat and you chewing the jaws yourself. You know, it's in the Kelly Hathen Hotel of all places. Although the, we- the wedding in question yeah, had a well-known uh, DJ play at the end for an hour, playing a load of uh, sort of classics. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, you'd, have taken, you'd have taken a feed of Coke at that particular wedding. We're, we're, we're being very cryptic here. That's the one where you, you looked away when the dinner came out and I took all the meat off your plate and you you turn around like, oh, this looks great. No, there's literally like two spuds in a carrot. And you're like, oh, hopefully here we go. And I'm sitting there with like mountains of turkey, like, notice, notice already. <laughs> yeah. You fucking agent. Although we were pissed, so. Again, stag dude, man, to that. Stag dude, I took all your meat, you box. Right. That'll be you and your man in fucking Austin. <laughs> I took a sausage out of your hot dog, you dopey bastard. No, fucking get a photo. <laughs> Do you remember that old urban myth of uh, a guy went to stag do with a bunch of lads and they thought it'd be funny to, they're walking home or whatever and there's like one of those machines we were at earlier pumping up your tire uh-huh. and they put one of up his ass and they blew the compressed air and just blew his guts out of his mouth. <gasps> oh. I, think that's an, I think that's an old myth. Like Jesus. What a way to fucking, I wonder what organs fell out of his mouth for that. Just pumping air up and all, all of them just come out like relish. Jesus. <laughs> we did a prank not a prank really it was bullying but uh back in the day our, our mate we just uh, you know this is back in the jackass days like oh yeah you know you you were watching that on tv and dirty sanchez and all just doing sh- like completely stupid dirty shit. sanchez was too far like i remember 30 years this guy was outside the, a cinema in carrick don't even know how i got the car the scene yeah and the guy was in a trolley and this other fella sp- full clip sprinted and mm-hmm. let go of him 
and he went <laughs> across the thing, hit a curb, came out of the thing, and just wrapped himself around a metal fence, just like gong like that, and fell to the ground. And it, it, he was down for a minute, and then he got up, and everyone laughed. Jesus Christ! Like could have died. Yeah, could have died. But the same dude, um, you know, you see those old, you know, on different stuff they would like tape someone to a wall, you know, like little jackass things, like duct tape them to a wall. And we we're like, let's duct tape him to the lamppost, you know, with his feet off the ground, and uh, just get a bit carried away with the duct tape. And it was like squeezing his neck, and the dude was like fucking like, you know, like his whole body. He was basically hanging him, like his whole fucking body. Went just like, yeah. He was like, let's just get off, and he's like fucking purple. And we we're like, oh, Jesus Christ. And that's the sort of stuff we did when we were kids. You know what I mean? Have you been on a stag do? Uh, yeah, but nothing mad. I've never been on like one of these. Let's go to Magaluf ones. Yeah. You know, you know? Poor Rush. Nope. It's funny. You, there's, no either, there's either fellas where you're like, you've been on like 28 stag days. Yeah. Or none. Yeah. You know? Dave Elliott. Oh, yeah. The guy's master on, of the stag. Guy's on a stag. He's, I mean, he should be rented out to go on anyone's stag. <laughs> yeah. He's a Do five-time you know? best man. He's uh, he's just, he's he's the right level of like that sort of laddish banter before yeah. it gets obnoxious. Yeah. It's actually fun. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't get too far. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's good. He's good laugh to be on the piss with. It's all games and all. You know what I mean? He's got glasses. He fucking do shitty magic tricks. Yeah, you know. I did with some glorious stag stories. Yeah, some drinking games are like when I, whenever I used to play rugby. I've told you that before. Like just the the games they make. It's it's borderline like hazing, abusive. Like oh yeah, public humiliation shit. Yeah, I remember doing a gig in Leeds one time, and like afterwards, I was chatting to this fellow who was in the audience, and he was in the rugby team, and he was saying about. Oh yeah, you know, I had the initiation thing, you know, it's like clearly trauma, but he's playing it off like, oh, you know, it was just something everyone had to do. And he's like, I was like, what do you have to do? And he's like, oh, they put me in this basement and I had to sit in this egg, like fully naked. And then they'd come in with like water guns and like, you know, shoot me with the water guns and all, and then throw eggs at me and all this hair. And I was like, bro, that's like, you were, se- you were sexually assaulted, like. Yeah. That's <laughs> oh yeah, there's a lot of that shit. There was a lot of like, you know, you get some... <clears throat> First year coming in who played a bit of rugby at school and they're like, Do you wanna play rugby with us? Yeah, we'll have a game on Saturday, sweet. And then you go down to the bar and it's just like, Oh, you know if you drink with your left hand, you have to take your cock out and stand on this table and we all whip you with belts. Yeah. You're like can we not just have a pint or for what to play rugby? I'm not joining anything that involves that. Yeah, yeah. Come on out we just met. Can we not have to chat for a minute? No. Before we start pulling the decks out and whipping each other. Yeah. And it was always like, you know, like, uh, just do something till someone books. It was always that. Yeah. A lot of boat racing, a lot of teams lined up, just necking drinks. Yeah, a lot of boking and cock in the, in the initiation stage. That's the name of it, but write that down now. Boking and cock. <laughs> nope, that's not. <laughs> boking, oh, come on, man. Get you us, like that. Get us monetized. No, man, the algorithm, the algorithm will be thought of that day. I got me putting cock in the title. I heard Vittorio the other day when he was in doing the podcast, he, he used the term, oh, that's good for the algo, and I just fucking... <laughs> good for the algo, bro. The algorithm. Algorithm. Too many people taking coke now, I find, you know, since we are chatting about it a bit. But even, like, it used to be, like, you know, it was at a rave exclusively, you took cocaine, and people all are coked out now in lab race. I've done credit work with a few people that are clearly, like, zinged up. But people can't take, you know, there'll be people, like, walking through Tesco's and they'll be doing a wine sample and they're like, do you want to taste this red wine? And they go, you just better get a bag in now. <laughs> <laughs> better get a bag in. Like, they can't take a drink without fucking, you know what I mean? Yeah. You want a fucking christening or something? Yeah. You, you, you walk in the door, got to eat glass of Prosecco. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we? You're in mass taking the blood of Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's fucking go, cool, <laughs> Your man stand there with a wee cup and you've been fucking. Why is it? Why is that so like weirdly submissive and sexual? Get on your knees and put your tongue out, and the guy's like, oh. <laughs> and the priest too. They get a wee bit like it's a bit too much, like you know. And he's fucking like a saying like, I know. Oh. Oh, daddy, you know. I know. Just like take take the fucking body. Crap. He's just hovering it above his cross. Take that. Oh, the dog of a boat like that. Take that. Take that. <laughs> and he's the he's like, take a sip. <laughs> These cunts are, uh, uh, get a bag in, lad. They need to update the body and blood of Christ. Like, uh, you should be snorting the body of Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to eat bump of Christ? <laughs> <laughs> Some big fucking Vatican ceremonial key. <laughs> 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 I've had four lines of Christ. I'm winding up. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and planet works. Why should? Why shouldn't there be? Why isn't there a drug yet? Just called Christ. Oh, why? Oh, the, the wee bags with a cross on it. <laughs> three fucking, three fucking lines of Christ. <laughs> three lines of Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, they need like a new like them fucking. What are they like? You you call them Christ desks? What time for a bit of is fucking hilarious? Oh, yeah. But like, you know, they need to the communi- communion. 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 That's a tough word for me. Do you like a custard cream and like a fucking put a chocolate milk or something? Ah, if it's symbolic, just fun for the whole family. If it's symbolic, just give me a fucking Mars bar. You know what I mean? Or a prawn shit? cracker, even. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy them off Amazon. Of course you can. Prawn <laughs> crackers. <laughs> how much? How much is holy water? I wonder how much holy water is. Amazon two fifty. Oh Jesus! Rona boy's wife was going off of me last night about like she'd be like, "Will you be mad for the Amazon packages?" And I'm like, oh, I we had to buy a box at the end of the driveway to put, you know, so the cunt doesn't have to come up to the house. She's like, I'd be spending a fortune on pickles. <laughs> and I was like, what, what do you mean? She goes, oh, Jesus. And now everyone else in the room was like, you're mad. And I was like, what sort of pickles? <laughs> what sort of pickles are we talking about here? And she was like, oh, Heinz do these like fucking tart dill pickles and they taste exactly like McDonald's. And I'm like, fucking, you know, like fucking straight It's so funny front. to one click buy pickles. Like, you know, oh, there's yeah. a man driving on a van with that. <laughs> you know, full of pickles in the back. I know, like just real hassle, real hassle to like get it delivered. Like, ah, if rings you, and all I'm outside the house here. No, is there anywhere I can leave this? No, do you have a code for it? No, what, what's in it? Pickles. <laughs> Seven pound a jar too. There must be good gear. Jeez. Holy water tenner. Jeez. And then that, there's holy water in a box. Like, oh, you're buying, like you're buying a fucking a bottle of whiskey. Twenty. <laughs> <laughs> the Old Testament collection. <laughs> Lourdes, Lourdes water bottle containing Lourdes water. My arse! Book of Matthew Club. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Holy water X Sprite. You could use that as mixer, rightly. Like, you oh, know? Oh, be, that's stag do banter. Oh, I. You know what I mean? You, you fill them up with fucking Jaeger and go on a party. <laughs> There's the fucking big boy. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to fill up for the year, there's a fucking one liter container of a Lourdes water. Doomsday prepping. <laughs> the one liter. The one liter. The one liter. Ten glasses. Wake like. up the next day and like, just I had, fucking, I had a liter of Lourdes water yesterday. I'm fucking out of my mind, boys. Lourdes. Jesus, Lourdes. The French Lord. Deep fry them communions. I'm dying. Give an egg on communion. Filled communion, please, brown <laughs> sauce. <just> filled communion. <laughs> Fish only at his friend. <laughs> oh, oh, holy, there's a holy water sprinkler. That's a here. That's too much. Ha, that's a specific device. That and that's yeah. holy water sprinkler. Where the fuck? How, how many? I always think about that. Now I, I was thinking about you know like a clapper board. Yeah. Who makes them? Uh, you can get them made anywhere. You know, like anyone who makes. PVC or like the wee plastic uh-huh. boards. You can get whatever you want printed, and then you just buy the the top bit. Because I was just wondering, like, if you get like, like a legit one, like how many do they sell in the world? Maybe like a hundred. You know what? Uh, oh, I like the time code ones. So I, like, oh yeah, they're fucking thousands. Of but them. but it's just like how many are they sell? Like a few. Same with that holy water spray. How many people come on here? Look, you're like, I wonder, is there a holy water sprinkler available? And sure enough, there is. I gotta say, the presentation is to me, it comes in a fucking leather papoose there. <laughs> but you must, you must fill it up from the back, and then it's got a couple of wee piss holes at the front, so you're not, yeah. you know, you're not, you're not wasting the liter of Lourdes water. You're just kind of like, that's for you, bitch. It's got three hundred and seventy-three reviews. Oh Jesus! Jesus. Here we go. <laughs> go, to, go to the one stars quick. <laughs> Wouldn't sprinkle shit. <laughs> Never again. I use this a lot. It is especially nice for cemetery visits or blessings. <laughs> what? But it's, but it is nice. But it is nice, and I enjoy using it. Sorry, are you buying one of these and then just blasting the whole graveyard? Yeah. <laughs> just a machine gun through and all the fuck. Yeah. Hey, bro. Ever heard of a hose? Uh, graveyard blessings. <laughs> I love this holy water sprinkler. The holes dispense the right amount of water. Easy to refill. Four stars. Nice. Works great. It says, this is part of a perfect Halloween costume. I don't fucking, you know. You come on, you, you heathen bastard. Auntie Grace Tour. <laughs> we bought this as part of a Halloween costume. That's a review. It's five stars, though. Worked fine. <laughs> Worked fine? 
<laughs> many stars is that? Four? Worked five, five stars. Nice size. I give this sprinkler to a priest who wanted it as a gift. Or wanted a gift to his fellow priest. He was happy with the size of the sprinkler, especially because it had the holding case. Nice pocket carry. <laughs> People are doing them fucking, what do you call them shots now? Where they take it? You're the daily <laughs> oh, carry. Like, you know, there's my knife in the water sprinkler. EDC. EDC. Everyday carry. EDC? Yeah, EDC. everyday carry. <laughs> got the knife, got the, got the wallet, got the water sprinkler, got the lighter, got the Zippo. GQ, what's nearby? Yeah. Top 10 water sprinklers <laughs> to wear this season. Off-white collab. Christ. Perfect for my needs. It was perfect for my small congregation. <laughs> I, is, that, is that how Holy Joe's just say squad? <laughs> Yo, you fuck with my congregation? When me and the small congregation pull up in the club? Yeah. <laughs> Man, that'd be the most gangster rap name. Small congregation. congregation. Taking the small congregation to the teddy bar. <laughs> uh, I keep a tight congregation. Whole small congregation turn. Yeah. <laughs> whole you don't need a full squad. You just need a tight congregation. You yeah. take over the world. No Judas is allowed. I think it's just him and his two mates praising Christ. He just turns around. He's like, here. There you go, lad. Two squirts. I might buy that for Peter Stagg. Yeah? Yeah. Give him, give him some ticket to the strip club. Get into the yellow rose. Give, give some of them chicks... Uh, What's the yellow rose? It's a strip club, but oh, awesome. Oh, nice. Just throw it in the strip. <laughs> That'll do away with any fucking diseases you might have, a good woman. <laughs> what about us being with a man the other day who is Nigerian? Mm -hmm. And he was talking about wearing protection with the ladies. Yeah. And he was just like, you just need to touch the elbow. Yeah. And I'm like, what? What sort yeah. of fucking witchcraft is this? Yeah. And he goes, yeah, you touch the elbow and it feels funny. And I was like, what does funny mean now? Yeah. What do you mean feels funny? If it feels funny, uh, you don't have to wear a condom. And I was like, bro, bro science. Yeah. Bro science of the, of the highest order. It's also just like if you're feeling at all's elbow, you know, if you're like, literally, like, you know, because I'm sure he has to do a bit of a scan of it. Aye. You know, she's like, are you into this? Or like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And he's like, no, you're good to go. And he's like, oh, fucking yeah. By the way, now we, we met up. It was me, Aaron, Iman, and Mike Rice. Yeah. Four loud guys. Four mouthy bastards. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and we're all chatting about, and, you know, it's become like part of the vernacular now to Peace. be, for him to be like, you know, you know. I'm going home here to get on my side. You know, the whole wanking on a side fiasco. It's, it's become a turn of phrase now. We're, he's like, Jesus, she'd, she'd have you on your side. No bother. So we go in. We're sitting in Nero. And the, like Nero beside in Botanic is the, the, the fucking... It's just like the dregs of Belfast. It's everyone from everywhere taking heroin and having a flat white in the, and using the shitters. That's all. It's like fucking a mess. And it, we, I let slip that he wanks on his side and a man's like, fucking, what? You fucking, you do it on your side? And he goes, I, and then he said, thinking it was normal, he goes, I just do it on my belly, right? Oh. And everyone's like, what? Thinking like, oh, you know, he spritzes up the belly. Yeah. But he's like, no, I just lie on my belly and just hump the bed. And oh. then, and then, by the way, the, by the way, him and Mike Rice and like loud as fuck. Rice is like, no way, lad, you're not fucking, <laughs> fucking humping the bed, lad. No, it's here. And it just got louder and louder. And then it was joking, like, oh, I'd no, I wouldn't sleep on any surface in your house. Hey, man, you know, I'd be sleeping on the floor because you're just fucking humping everything in it. And it was just, it just went on and on. Like, what, what do you do with your fucking phone if you're looking at porn? And all? Like, I just rest my head and watch the fucking thing. And it just it went on and on and on. And there's this girl, this black girl, like typing on a thing with like Beats headphones in. And she just took, she took the fucking headphone out and turned around and just went, by the way, I know way too much about you guys now. <laughs> we're just like, ah, you nosy bitch. <laughs> no noise cancellation there, you nosy bastard. I know. You had them switched off. You <laughs> fucking over there diddling your skittle. And I immediately felt like, you know, I felt embarrassed for two minutes and we got straight back into it. <laughs> we moved seats and got straight back <laughs> We did. we did. We moved. I went, the, the, lads, if you want some privacy, yeah. walk over to this couch here. This area has been tarnished. Talk, talk more about wanking. But I said to him, and I was like, the hubris of you to make fun of me for wanking on my side, and you do it in your belly? Like, yeah. you just ride the bed? The bed must be read out, like. Just a channel up the middle of the bed of him. He travels about right, but too, like, so he's probably, he's you know, at this stage, seasoned. He's humped every travel lodge in the UK. Seasoned bed rider at this stage, like. I mean, would it not be calloused? <laughs> You know what I mean? You're taking me like, like leather. Yeah. 
<laughs> he's a Although wild I dare man. say he's working with an absolute pipe. Oh yeah. He's probably like allowing my belly and my dick's a foot out this way anyway. Yeah. So, you know, it's just like I'm you know, yeah. playing snooker. Like Yeah, he's fucking hitting the door off it for fuck's sake. <laughs> I had to laugh during the week there was like because Biden and all was over, like they I'll actually show you this video. There was some people took offense to it. It was like Took offense to Biden coming over? No, no, no. Like because the New York because nah. the New York Times did a um set of photos or something in Belfast and they just chose to show the dumpiest spots like mm -hmm. um can I go full full scrizine? Hinda 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 Jesus Yeah you know, so they just, came over and just went to the absolute shittest end of town. I was waiting for a picture of China China to pop up there. Just all the dump spots. Ah, oh, God rest Although we can't knock so China China. It's been Decent closed for a while. Like. Has it? Aye. Where China you? China closed about fucking two years ago. What's in its place? I'm not too sure. Wouldn't want to fill them boots. Wouldn't want to fill them boxes. But, you know, it's. I don't think it's exciting, you know, if you're if you're looking at the narrative from the outside, it's not exciting to be like Biden's going over twenty fifth anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement, or no, that was what Clinton was over for. But like, it's not exciting to be like, oh, they're actually doing all right. Yeah, it's still good to be like, he is doing God's work visiting this impoverished shit. Yeah, oh, this third world country. Here's a photo on the wall of a man with a machine gun. Yeah, <laughs> you know, this is the sort of place you're in. Yeah, there's a child's crash beside this twenty foot photo. Yeah, and five oh. minute walk away from it, there's a fucking bio bomb place. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> People worried about gentrification. It isn't. This it's here marks the fucking anniversary of a time where there's fucking shit out the street now or some fucking UDA, man. Oh, blah, blah. Do you want a bowl of fire? <laughs> <laughs> here's exactly where. <laughs> Here's where a bomb went off, killing fucking 19 people. There was bits of car embedded in the wall and everything. What's your thoughts on calzone? Because we're going to do you one around the corner here. Right, now we're wrapped up. Damn so many, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> a traditional Irish black pudding gyoza. Here. 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 Cut that out. That's mine. That's my fucking idea. Holy fuck, I'm sir. keeping that. Tyrone Japan Fusion. Tyrone Japan Fusion, absolutely. Black Pudding Goza, fucking right. I'd be all over that. I was watching a very fun <laughs> documentary the other day. If you, This is serious. If you want to watch a good documentary called Shoulder to Shoulder. Right. And uh, it was about um, the history of the, R the I IRFU, like the rugby, Irish rugby throughout the Troubles, and how they never, sp they never split up into two teams. It was always just Ireland. And like the mix of people that would play for Ireland. Uh -huh. So like at the time, like during the Troubles and all, you'd have like Willie John McBride, who's like a famous, you know, legendary player from here, was working as a bank, this is before it was pro even, working as like a bank manager in Belfast and fucking bombs would go off and, you know, they'd rush you up the street and another bomb would go off and then he'd have to pack a bag and go down to Dublin to train and all. And then he'd, there'd be people who, one fella is like, his granda was part of the fucking rising bedding down in the same room and the same team as a guy who was actually like an army captain or something mm -hmm. in for the British army in Belfast. Mm -hmm. Madness, like, mm -hmm. but they were saying how cool it was that everybody like stuck together. But then the presenter is Brian O'Driscoll, you know, the goat. And he was fucking, <laughs> they sent him to like Lock Gall or something to speak to like orange men. Mm -hmm. And they fucking, they're like, oh, Brian, get a fucking crack at that lamb bag. And all he took puts a drum on. He's like, <laughs> It was a fucking piercing noise. And uh, and then he literally got in the car, opened his phone, and it was just like, we're going to kill you, you fucking... Like, just immediate, like, death Jesus threat Christ. for him, like, picking this drum up. But his, his, his whole main point was just like, you know, so, uh, you know, like, uh, would you would you watch the rugby? And the guy's like, yes, I'd watch, I'd watch Ulster in Ireland. And they're like, would you call yourself an Irishman? And he's like, I would die, but I'm British. And the guy's like, how does, how does that work? And he goes, well, you know, I'm an Irishman. I was born Ireland. But I am British, and then his the whole the whole documentary was him just coming away, going like, "What is going on up there?" Yeah, like there's, he's, he's going, "You're British, but you you are a Irish, and you support Ireland." And he's like, "If I, Ireland were playing England, who would you want to win?" He's like, "Oh, Ireland, but you're British, aye, but you're Irish, aye." And he just was the I don't know the the main opinion of the or the main takeaway from the whole documentary. He was just going, 
what is wrong with you? Fuck off. He's just like, what the fuck is going on? I don't yeah. understand. And then he was talking like Tommy Bow. He was like, I lived in Monaghan. Just, I played GAA in the summer and rugby in the winter. It was just forever. That's just the way I did it. And then I went, moved up to Armagh, then played for Ulster. And he's like, so you're like the modern poster boy for Irish rugby. And he's like, I never had it on. Uh, but it was just so, it was so weird. Yeah, it's, it's so weird when they put these guys on the spot. Like, I was, they would have been on, you know what I mean? It's culture, isn't it? Yeah. But like, it's funny when, it, when you're just trying to be like, so you're, you're an Irishman? Yes. But I'm a Protestant and I am British. But I am Irish. It was a bizarre. Great documentary now. I think you'd like it. Yeah. It's Did I'll uh, Brian get the news fixed? Brian O'Driscoll? Aye. I don't he's, know. He's looking well. He's a handsome bastard. See, see when he, he was sitting down with Tommy Bow in Croke Park and I, and I was like, these are two sexy men. Like for guys that have been, had a professional rugby career getting fucking smashed about for decades and the two of them are sitting there like, these are handsome guys. Oh yeah, they are. Eh? Handsome guys. I remember Tommy Bow came out of that private uh, doctor's up in Lisburn Road and we were in this cafe and I mean Maureen and all her sisters near fucking chewed through the window I yeah. was like you can't. and he's on crutches and all with a, an knee brace I was like well, you calm down you fucking and I was I remember we were in the remora one time <laughs> Stephen Ferris was there in a white shirt my aunt nearly fainted like it was a fucking Enrique Iglesias concert uh, yeah which actually she did do that as well she went to Enrique Christ Enrique. the name <laughs> look at the tip mate <laughs> <laughs> she went to Enrique Iglesias this was like 2003 or something Ferris was there too <laughs> And uh, she fainted, and like you know, everyone, like it was like, oh, because he's so dreaming. I was like, not just too warm. <laughs> she couldn't handle the crowd. <laughs> uh, one of the biggest shames in comedy was uh, the time we did a video for Boojum and Stevie Ferris was in it, mm -hmm. and Craig Gilroy, and uh, they just whoever's publicist or whatever or PR person seen it, they were like, no, we can't have this go out. So I have that video somewhere of. Us, us at the Ulster training camp we're like or up at the up at the King Spawn with them boys doing stuff you know what I love about Ferris he, he is a unit like he loves a bottle of Buckfast uh, the, man, the man he keeps it together you know when he's doing the commentating and stuff I think you know they need to work on the defence blah 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 he, but he's he's right on the edge of just like if you just if he heard the click of that, pen, oh, that 10 lid he'd be like yeah, anyway yeah. I'll speak to you in a minute <laughs> like an old Vietnam vet just like uh, take me <laughs> back just takes me back yeah. beast though Oh, he is uh, a absolute savage a, absolute man. animal in his time, you know, fucking. I played it on the, po the podcast before, but when he when he came back after injury, and there everyone was super excited at fucking Ravenhill. Yeah, and they kicked the ball, and he just fucking belted the whole way up the pitch, and the guy caught it, and he just emptied him, and everyone was like, yeah! <laughs> Your man would have fainted and got back up and fainted again. I can be <laughs> Where did your man go see Enrique? The Odyssey lad? Oh, I. Uh, she had to get, like, literally, like, you and know. China, China, and head around. She had to get, like, escorted out through the crowd. So, like, my lost crowd surfing, like, unconscious. <laughs> you know, Dorothy Perkins earrings falling off her head. And then just, like, gets fucking, like, airlifted to the front. Security takes her out, like. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking. <laughs> we were talking before you, before the podcast. You were saying, would a, would a blues bar. Uh, would, would it work in Belfast or something? Yeah, I'd, well, I know there is Bird's Jazz Club, but like, I'd love like a like a Motown night where it's like, you know, you get a live band and then afterwards there's like a wee Motown DJ or something. I'd love that shit. We're in a fortunate place where we can do whatever the fuck we want. Start a Motown night? Yeah. Like if me and you started a turn of the millennium rap night. Oh, I Good night. In, in a small enough. You could do it anywhere. You could do it fucking in here. You're telling me you couldn't sell a hundred tickets uh, in here? Yeah. Of course you could. Just put Fat Joe on the ox, let it run. Yeah. <laughs> what about us, the car the other day? Listening to the playlist was called Now This Is Scott Storch. Yeah. And it was just all the beats from the back that lean back and all. And then uh, <laughs> Break Your Neck by Break Your Neck by Buster Rhymes come on. And I was like, there isn't another song on earth where a guy just goes, Break your fucking neck, bitches. <laughs> but there should be. Yeah. Break your fucking neck, bitch. It was so funny, too. We were like, we were coming away from Lavery's, going back down the road, and uh, on that playlist was like a 50 Cent song. And you were like, now, not to sound too middle aged white guy here, but technically not that great of a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the man at that candy shop, boy? <laughs> yeah, no, that was. Who, who? Oh, I, Vittorio was in the car. Yeah. And he goes, did, did he ask me? He was like, would you be a 50 Cent fan, or did you ask me? I asked you. And I was like, yeah, not to sound like the most 36 millennial <laughs> guy of all time. Just not technically like, gifted. I just don't think the actual bars were that hot, <laughs> in my opinion. 
The man did not spit bars to a level that I enjoy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's also because Break Your Neck was the last song you had playing, yeah. which is a vicious song to have playing as soon as you start the car again. Oh, yeah. Because Vittorio hopped in the car and was just like, Jesus Christ. Break your fucking neck, bitches. Yeah. Was he got a degree in the triangle or something? Aye. And the percussion and shit like that there. Oh, he makes that triangle sing. Does he? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Tuning. Rubs out in the Tuning. Uh, does he have it shoved down his jabber? <laughs> Doesn't actually sound too far off that sound bowling I was talking about. Yeah. 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 Mm. People are getting bit. See, all these, all these cunts that have went from like, uh, you know, used to be a druggie. Went sober, got into fitness, got into yoga, got into meditation, got into ice baths. You know what the next one is? That upside down fucking bin thing where they just go boom, 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 boom. What's, What's that? that? It's like a fucking what do you call that? Now it's like an upside oh, down yeah, drum. Yeah. They're fucking dear. It looks like an es- so <laughs> it looks like an espresso pod, but it's that size. <laughs> and what do you do? You just get into it and you just fuck get into it? What is it? An upside what do you say an upside down bin or something? It's like a fucking curved Metal thing sits on your lap, and you just go like, oh, bong, bong, ah, bong, 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 bong. bring back religion. That's the latest in uh, trying to trying to not make you murder someone. We else. need religion back for these years of cooked the goose. They're looking for anything to put a bit of faith in. I think when people go too far into that wellness world, yeah, you're absolutely be- in a more unhealthy way than just like drinking it away. Yeah, you know, pushing shit to the bottom. Oh yeah, just on the fucking you know Castle Rock bit. <laughs> I'm not going to kill anybody today. <laughs> bung, bung, bung. Bung, bung. Don't beat my wife to death. Dun, 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 dun. Stay away from heroin. It's a bar- that's a beat. Listen, I have bars. Fifty cent on the bars. Like. Stay away from heroin. Um, yeah, it's all, but it's kind of a too much. I was talking about the guy that like recently found religion, but also takes mushrooms once a week. That I met in Canada. And he, you know, he was just like, timely. He was just like, I hate it, bro. Cause like, you know, it's like, obviously people like they grow up in school and like they learn about religion. They learn about God. And like, you, you learn so young that like, it's kind of just the thing that you have now, but like, I'm just learning this shit, you know? So it's like blowing my mind. And then he went like, dude, Jesus and God are the same person. Uh, sick. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, I wrote us pretty madly. I would love just the, the bro recital of, of uh, the Bible. Yeah. You know? And they're like, fucking three years later, dude rolls the fucking stone out of the way, and he's not even dead anymore, dude. Uh, turn. And a turn, <laughs> and his fucking wife is a fucking hoe, man. She had a baby, but like, she didn't have sex. Yeah. A spurt gave it to her. <laughs> Mary Magdalene's like side piece. <laughs> you know? Like, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Get it in the lot. Uh, what flavor is that? That's blueberry sour raspberry. I am. I'm gonna try and stop after I come back from America. Uh, I'm gonna go crazy out there on them. <laughs> buy the ones that are like thirty dollars each, and then come back here and try and go cold turkey. So I will be. No, I will just say in advance there will be two weeks for it. I'll just be very cranky and irritable, and you know. No, once again, you'll be like. No, no, I will not let you try anything that's gonna fuck up your day-to-day pattern he'd be like yeah. it'll no, be like the, I'll it'll, put someone to death it'll you be like me to stay on me oh it'll be oh, like I, the, it'll be like I'll the elvis like, thing it'll be like when you were sick <laughs> you know he's he's fucking gaslighting he's going nothing wrong with you come on elvis you're the king of vegas you're the king just of get me. that strawberry kiwi in you come on aaron <laughs> who's gonna do all the laughing on this podcast <laughs> get it that's it sweet baby boy sweet baby boy take <laughs> You'll be alive forever through the audi- means of audio. Oh, fuck. We got a Lost Mary sponsor. <laughs> Imagine. Oh, no. Oh, be, boy. Uh, do you know how Ziggy said? in my coffin. Do you know how Ziggy said could be on board in a heartbeat? Nah, nah, bro. Don't do it. I've still four me. pound of mankind. Don't do it to me. Don't do it to me. Nah, it's fucking stupid. It is stupid. Like, we should just start. Let's just start smoking cigs, man. Well, I do occasionally. If they're, you know, cigs, I can't treat like cocaine where it's like, if it's talking about you. If it's not about it, it's free. Do you remember you had that one raggedy packet in Austin? Yeah. You had one raggedy packet of fucking Indian spirits or whatever the fuck they're called. American spirits. American spirits. (laughs) (laughs) They were were minging. Ah, You see, when I I used to smoke, I did smoke cigarettes and then out of poverty started to smoke rollies. And then once you do that, you much prefer them. Rollies are nice, yeah. I do like a rollie. And and then, you know, if you, this is, this is real hipster, but. If you can get to like a tobacconist and buy good tobacco and the next week's skin, like you can have a night, like a nice cigarette, not a stinking out of egg. Like, yeah, you can make a nice little ceremonious, like, mm, that's a nice one. That's kind of self care. The oh, rolling, it's, oh, it's, it's very, uh, 
Therapeutic, yeah, for yeah, sure, for sure. Sunny day, shades on, and you smoke your own creation. Out in, the, out in the morning, we coffee, we we roll it. Just to get those like fucking toffee flavored tobacco on it. What if I, what if I can <laughs> <miss> the most? <laughs> <laughs> what like uh, like interval part of your day cigarette do you miss the most post dinner post uh, shade no the, well wake up there's a like sunny day coffee outside mm. that's a great one the day drinking with your friends yeah you know pints on the table couple, you know fucking yeah lovely yeah uh, but that's really about it. Or the late night burning the sort of midnight oil cigarette. So you don't miss it like the one Thursday? No, nah, not at all. Uh, but like I, I remember, you know, years ago when I did smoke, like, I mean, you're talking probably about 10 years ago. But like, um, if I was ever doing work or had a video to make or something, then I, w- I would be up to like two in the morning and you could make a wee cup of tea and just be like, Phew. you know what I mean? You felt like a fucking, felt like some like a writer or something you know like, yeah, like a st- 1920s playwright yeah just stayed up all night smoking bangs the blues bar wouldn't work in belfast what else what else have they tried in belfast didn't really work you were talking about that hawaiian place which actually was great now that it's say you got a burger that was still moving out of it but <laughs> i thought it was did you right. ask for that was it was it supposed to be half uh, raw? no and i don't really mind a bit of red you know no. i'm <laughs> perfectly fine with that but it was fully raw the guy's like it's hawaiian style mate that's how they did it uh, it didn't last too long, anyway. Raw burger. Oh, Jesus oh, Christ. <laughs> Sassy bastard. Eh? White boxers on, claws out. L- libelous over here. Jesus. <laughs> didn't uh, last too long. No. <laughs> no. People walking through Victoria Square being like, Hawaii? Who fucks from Hawaii? Was that beside and, Nando's, yeah? Aye, ah, it was, yeah, eh? yeah, yeah. But, like, real Hawaiian food's, like, you know, a spam sandwich and, like, beans and rice. Like, they eat fucking yeah. crazy shit over there. And a pineapple. And a pineapple, yeah. Uh, aloha, lad. Uh, <laughs> aloha, mate. Aloha, mate. Welcome to Victoria Square. <laughs> Do you want a fucking Smithix and a tiki cup? Or oh, it's a crack. There's loads of stuff just don't work. You can't. You just can't get away with it. And it has to be. It has to be run by a person from that place. I think. Yeah. You know. Or at least someone that's like lived there for an extended period of time, and then came back and put their own wee spit on it. What about when we were in that sushi cafe and I put hot sauce in your? You were sick, and I was like, get a bit of that hot sauce. Or it was like paste into your thing, mm-hmm. and you put it in. You're like, Jesus, I'm feeling it. And then this wee woman who worked there had that perfect like half sort of Asian, half Belfast thing, and she's like, "You're telling him to put that in his drink at all, and that's your terrible." And she she was like, really fucking making a big deal of it and hitting yeah. me. And all, you're a bully. You're a, <laughs> you're a bully making him have the hot the hot sauce and all. And then she would just keep walking past, go, I can't believe him. I can't believe him. Yeah. It's also embarrassing that we were coming from Lavery's the other night and like walking past it. And the guy that works there was just like, Well, boys. Well, boys. And I was like, Oh, it's a bad sign. It's a bad sign. You know, after hours. But he did he, he, he did get a couple of recommendations. Yeah. Because he's like, Yeah, we had a guy in, you know, said you recommended uh, to come here. Yeah. You guys are comedians. And they're like, <laughs> guilty. Well, if you have to. Guilty, guilty. Yeah, can you give us <laughs> a few free noodles? <laughs> Sponsored. 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 Was by the sushi cafe? I'd take that. I'd just take that, no bother. Free sh- shrimp tempura. And the guy just routinely, you know, like two o'clock every Wednesday, Thursday, fires around a load of shrimp tempuras. Yeah. Mm. Tastiest bites you'll ever have. Oh, Jesus Christ. Is them shrimp tempuras very nice? Yeah. Is, uh, Dacking up. I always worry, like, if you had a few drinks in you and someone just kept bringing those. Oh, no, it'd be dangerous. You'd though. have fucking 45 of them. If I had that artificial pint hunger <laughs> and someone would just bring it down like I'm Henry VIII, just another one. Do you know what would kill when it comes to like themed things? If they reopened the beach club, I never got to go to. You never got to just go. Just you ever go to the beach club now? I think I did. Yeah, I can't remember. Actually. It was lethal. What was good about it? You see, it was kind of at the time people maybe thought it was a bit tacky. Mm. But part of the charm. That's what it's all about now. Tackiness. You know, if they re- reopened that, it'd be fucking killer. Well, nightclubs are tacky. You just don't care when you're nightclub age. Mm. You know, because it's just like any old fucking yeah, abandoned actually, warehouse. If, actually, if, if they ever get a plan on suit, you like? If they reopen that, it would just be full of fucking people my age. Yeah. yeah. Beach club reunion. Oh, you know, yeah. little fucking baldy cunts just fucking fighting each other. Yeah, my, my, my mate got in a fight. Right, there used to be a kebab stall like right outside the beach club. And he got into a fight and didn't put the kebab down the whole time. Fucking amazing. 
Who's fighting? Like, Priorities. Who's fighting after a goddamn club night? Like, yeah, there used to be a nightclub at like, Utopia. <laughs> <laughs> I and, love uh, I love that. And then it got rebranded as Climax. And uh I love when there's just an absolute rural shithole <laughs> in Ireland. They're like, come to fucking Nirvana. And the Monaghan. posters would drop like every month and it would be like, you know, their like oh. theme night and it'd be just some doll of her tits out, you know. Nobody there looks like her. And uh no. it was like like the shit you used to drink back then too. Like we used to get these things called jackhammers, which was tequila and Jack Daniels. And if someone put that in front of me, then I'd literally book like. I mean, absolutely why? Yeah. Absolutely why bother with any of those things? Because we're young, wild, and free, bro. Yeah, you well, know, we're doing what we wanted. Dogs in the night. Wolfing at the moon. Wolfing at the moon? <laughs> Wolfing at the moon, boys. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's not clever at all when people just take two drinks and they're just like, this is, this is a fucking Buck Daniels. Oh, yeah. Dead. I've had that before, too. Dead yeah. the next morning. You yeah. know, like. And I'll buck Daniels to fuck you up right like. Doing a fucking Cookstown, just waking up in a forest and having to ask randomers, can you sleep in their house? Yeah. Big like, man. No, it was a shower. A shower? Imagine that was all you needed. Do you want us to ring your parents, right? Nah, I just wanted to wash. Yeah. To be honest with you. Hilarious. Unbelievable. I have seen videos now of like fellas on TikTok just like, you know, walking into a McDonald's and just going to the back. Like literally like where they're fucking making the food and like shaking the fucking fryers and all. Like these young ones, they have no fucking respect for nothing. No respect. I would start smacking people. That's why I see so many videos in America, like at a Waffle House, and someone's just beating them to death with. All the Waffle House is where it goes down, like just fucking people launching chairs at each other. Yeah. It's it's art, like it actually has a reputation for like fights going down. All I really want to go to one like late night. Just to is it see. not because it's open all night? Yeah. Aye, the, 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 and like a lot of them are situated beside like you know a straight of like dive bars and shit like that. Yeah. You're asking people, for trouble. People just fucking throw jackhammers in them and then go in there and power bomb some slot for a table. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Wonder the job interview, like, can you fry a waffle? Yeah. Can you make bacon? I uh, what what belt are you in jiu-jitsu? <laughs> can you throw hands? Can you throw hands? What have you been to Thailand, do Muay Thai or anything? Or what's crack? <laughs> yeah. You ever been to special forces? Thank God I've never had a angry customer ever really. In all my years of doing, you know, fucking jobs where you're interacting with the general public. Never had anybody really angry or anything. But I've seen it happen to other people. Have you? Yeah. You're working with? Yeah. People getting aggressive? Well, like, kind of, like, just at that little fine line, you know, where it's like they're not f- fully fucking f- throwing digs, like, but it's, like, volatile territory. I remember when I worked uh, in retail, mm-hmm. and there would be a lot of people coming in complaining about gear that they'd bought, and the, the manager was like, just let them come in and let them get it all out of them. Because they've been sitting in the car being like, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to fucking tell him I bought this camera now with their own card now. And they come in like absolutely fucking fuming. And he's like, just let them say it all and then just tell them what you can do about it. Because they've, they've, they just want to get it out of them. Yeah. They don't want an, like an argument. Yeah. And I would, you'd just be standing there like, listen to some bitch fucking give off. Like, I fucking, I put a fucking, uh, you know, fork in this microwave and it blew up. What sort of fucking establishment is this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you just have to wait and be like, well. Don't do that. Does that make them angry? Like the zero reaction? No, they just, they, they realize they're they're not getting the dispute they wanted. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, if you bite back, it's worse. Yeah, it becomes a thing. And then you're like, can I be their manager and all that shit? This was in what, Curry's? Aye. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was thinking maybe it was like a clothes shop or something, which is. <laughs> have, have you ever worked in a clothes shop? No. Have you ever worked in a clothes shop? No. no I, is it just no. like mainly fold? Yeah, pretty much. A lot of stand the boat. No. Uh, can I help you with anything? I pre mark a bit of fucking nightmare to work in. Oh. The way hers trade, you know, on the shelf clothing in Primark is ridiculous. Like. The shoe section? I'm pretty sure I was with Maureen one time and she like fucking was just, you know, going around the little jammies and the slippers and the fucking underwears and all. And then she she was looking at something and she just was like, there's a stain on that. And then we just left immediately. Yeah. Some manky bastard just been trying on a thong or something. Oh, uh, yeah. I kind of, that does, just get, you think too much about that. Just get their asshole right in it. And then, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Like, this, who's tried that song before me? The best story I ever heard was someone worked in um, a clothes shop and they went into the changing room like at the end of the night and someone had just pished in a Clinton cards, like, you know, a bag that you would put uh, like a bottle of wine in, uh, just, just pished in it up the way and just left it in there. I thought that was hilarious. Why? Why? Because hard, it's hard to even pick up, isn't it? <laughs> well, you just you have you to pick go it up, handles. Like, it depends how long I've been there. It might be like uh, soggy. 
Yeah. You know, like an old McDonald's cup. Aye. And you better hope to the bag is pristine. Otherwise, if there's any holes or whatever in yeah. it, pitch is going to leak down. And it's wobbly. You know, you lift it and it's like wobbly a wee bit and all. It's yeah. Like you have to put a straw on it. Take yeah. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Pour a wee bit out, take the head off it, you know, and then transport it. There's uh, no training for that, like, you know, there's no training for, if some, you know, you sign up to work in River Island, you think it's going to be a fun job, you know, maybe a wee bit of a staff discount, and then one day, you just walk into the change room, bag of pish, just sitting there free. I remember whenever I used to work in a nightclub, lifting glasses, if I walked into the toilets, and there was boker pish, I'd walk out, like, i never seen it. Yeah. I'd be like, that's someone else's. I was just ready to go for the bar night. Yeah. Boke everywhere. Yeah. God almighty. Oh, Jesus. Nightclubs are the fucking bleakest place to work on. Yeah, yeah, because oh. everyone's everyone's fucked, you know, and you're just stone cold sober, just like navigating your way through the halls, trying to avoid people like shoulder digging in the, Yeah, you know, people shouting drinks orders at you, disappearing. People getting fingered in the toilets, you know. That's annoying. You kind of have to turn a blind eye to, you know. That's one of the ones the bouncers. Yeah. What's, what, what's wrong with that? You can't be that'll getting be the blast high, in the toilets. That'll be the highlight of your evening. I know, you know, that's why you know, I kind of go, here, they're young, they're having fun, you know. <laughs> Leave that to Malachi to sort out. <laughs> Malachi's like, fucking hell, I go. <laughs> it's go time. About time this fucking night picked up. Coming in with a phone and all, here, cut that out now. <laughs> cut that out. Wouldn't be at that. <laughs> fucking dirty bastards, you Kids these days, eh? Jesus Christ! And that doesn't that freak you out too? The stories like people staying in Airbnbs and the guy has like a full television studio rigged in the apartment. Oh, I sure there's. There, I seen a TikTok ad for a device that you would buy for going to stay in an Airbnb. We just like shine it about the room and it goes like, dit, 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 dit. you know, it's it, it, like if there's a camera somewhere. That's crazy. That there's a need for that invention. I think about that sometimes. I was like, oh, there's probably a guy in fucking, you know, LA somewhere has a bunch of videos of me in my side. <laughs> No, I'd be like, here, bro, you're going to regret buying that <laughs> camera. You're about to get a show around here, you know what I mean? He, he eats in one bed and wanks in the other? What? <laughs> what kind of a fucking animal did I let stay in my home? He was eating a kebab at the desk and wanking into the bin? While Holmes under the hammer is on the television inches from his face? <laughs> the man had two McFlurries in the space of one wank? How does, it, how does he even have that stamina? The guy had a Gideon's Bible wrapped around his pace? While he was FaceTiming his family? <laughs> <laughs> Pished in the cattle? Not even sexual? <laughs> yeah, I'd say, the wagon would be the least disturbing, would be just me eating with no one around. Why has he got a t-shirt on but no boxers? <laughs> He's extra naked. <laughs> Walking about like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> I do that sometimes. I do do that sometimes. That's oh, yeah, great. <laughs> I do that sometimes for the, you know, just one of these kind of long t-shirts, you know. So it's like kind of just over the pace. And the I guy's just... made a fat booty out of two pillows. <laughs> <laughs> He's belly down. <laughs> oh, fuck. E-man's fucked if anybody's right. recording his. Yeah. My camera picked up a man who was suspected to be dead for eight hours straight. Turns out he was just wanking on his side. We only knew he was alive when the delivery arrived. It was just a vape. And he leapt out of bed and told the delivery boy he was just working out. Oh, fuck. Ah, lad, you know what it is, them kettlebells. No. Ah. The housekeeping knocks on the door, says, would you like a bed chain? He goes, oh, sorry, I'm just out of the shower. He just woke up. That's a porn I watched recently. But The hotel maid walking on and a guy pulling his wear. Mm -hmm. And she joins in. Of course. Yeah. They're always hot, too. Yeah. And you're always, you know, some many hotels I've been in, you're just, you're going like, is there, is there anyone hot? Yeah. Nah, never. <sighs> yeah, they do knock those sometimes at pretty inconvenient moments. Oh, they do, but uh, like you know that that sort of fantasy that they've they've set up in porn, you know, we're like you know, maybe someone's gonna knock the door, and a busty Latina comes in here, and she's like, "Oh my goodness, I like it," you know. That's not gonna happen. Is she working? Going one of these days, I'm just gonna barge in, and there's just gonna be a, like a sexy dude 
with an oiled up pipe ready to go. Do, yeah. do they think that way too? I don't think yeah. so. Instead, it's some doll like in, where the hotel's in ice den. Some doll with Bridget. She's got scoliosis. She walks and I'm just on my side. Close the door immediately. I'll come back another time, Pat. Come back another time. But they'll be on the side as a disguise. You know, she. You're not like me, you know, foot in the windowsill. Oh yeah, well, I had to be molded into that. You know, I had to go for a year. I had to go for a full year of stealth wanking. But it's cool that you never snap. Myself. It's cool that you never snap. No. snap back. Sometimes it just does me. Habit stacking. Habit stacking. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You've the habit stacked off you. We need to get out of it, right? We're not going to do another hour, half an hour talk about wanking. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Cheers for listening, guys. It's the fucking. <laughs> It's, we're having a great time, aren't we? We're having a fucking great time around here. Uh, if you want more of the same, patreon.com forward slash bomb squad pod or bomb squad or bomb squad pod or something like that, you'll find it. It's in the fucking links, isn't it? Get under. How many episodes is up there now, now? About four? Uh, by this episode? By this episode? Maybe fucking six? Just Jesus by God, six Jesus episodes of oh, shit. <laughs> If you, want to, if you want to sponsor the podcast, throw money at us. We'll mention your name and slag you probably. <laughs> yeah. Right, we'll get out of here. Cheers for listening, guys. Take care of yourselves. Love to you. uh, cheers, guys. Thanks and good night. <laughs> good night. Good luck and good night. We need a sign off. Best of uh, good luck and fuck you. Yeah. <laughs>